Alright guys, such a here again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Big roster leaks arriving yesterday after lots of speculation over the last few days as to what's going on with the Carolina Royal Ravens from Zuma on the initial leaks that we saw, but also with Mac unfortunately stepping away from what could have been the Vegas Legion team, that opens many other possibilities as well. The team they're supposedly building actually looks really quite promising on paper, given that there's other teams that have built very questionable rosters, I would say, over the last couple of months here. Very much interested in your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always, I would greatly appreciate it. First of all, we're still massively wondering what's actually going to happen here with the CDL season. When is it going to start? When are the events going to be? Where are the events going to be? How many are there going to be? Is the World Championship going to be later? Is the offseason going to be as long as this year's offseason? I don't really know. This was what the CDL looked like at the beginning. Now look, were these really the good old days? I mean, not in my opinion, but I guess from Toronto's perspective, maybe so, because they only came around as an organisation at this point. But it is kind of interesting to think about how much things are change how many of these organizations even still exist in some form I mean yeah like okay Gorillas are still here Toronto is still here Surge is still here but they're gonna go to Vancouver Subliners is still the same like not many of these haven't changed at all Florida is no longer existing it's Miami Dallas Empire is unfortunately dead Ravens have changed Paris is now in Vegas Optic is complete I mean Optic this spot now is owned by the Los Angeles Thieves and the Huntsman spot became Optic Chicago and then that actually became the Boston spot because then Optic merge with Dallas Empire. Absolute mess. But um, yeah, we will maybe find out in the near future what's happening here. And I'm pretty sure Jake Kelly actually says in the replies here that, yeah, he will be leaking something soon, potentially including the dates for the league. So we'll see that maybe soon. He also does mention on the Los Angeles Grillers, maybe he's heard something of what they're up to at the moment because they're not up to much. And look, you can say that it's absurd what LA Grillers have done. You could also say that it's um, justified financially given the state of the league at esports in general but still it is kind of crazy that LA Gorillas went from being you know one of the biggest spending teams it was always considered like all right look you'll get a bag from LAG but you won't win anything and um you know they actually did manage to win something somehow in Vanguard so you know those players got the bag and they did manage to win an event that year but usually that was kind of the theory over the first few years that okay they've got the cash coming in from Crocky Sports and Entertainment they don't really know how to build a good team they don't really have the um you know the branding to make that happen to make players really want to join if they're real top talents and yeah as Jake Hell says they were handing out three-year deals huge buyouts to whatever they wanted and now well it's not happening anymore we really don't know what's happening we have rumors about Vegas we have certainly rumors about Carolina Royal Ravens we'll get to here in a second LA Grillers we just don't know whether the CDL are gonna have to knock on their door and be like guys you do know you've got to build a roster you know what I mean like the game does come out in two weeks it might be a good idea to do something so we'll see more of that in a second Clayster though has been getting ready to go for the new season He's obviously been going through some personal stuff, but we did see him say a few days ago that he's moving around. I'm guessing he's leaving Texas and probably going to be based out of uh, Carolina. We will see just because even when it was London Royal Ravens a couple of years ago, they were based out of Charlotte. I think last year they're based out of LA, which was um, maybe not the wisest, more expensive, but also worse internet. Okay, the internet's fine, but in terms of internet connection, when you're playing a lot of team space in Texas, not maybe so ideal. But um, yeah, Clay's getting ready to go. We know how much passion this guy has for competing in Call of Duty and um, I thought this is kind of uh, unfortunate but kind of funny from Clay when he dropped the, the classic Clayser 3-0 signs last year and as Clay said like only time all year I got to do that right so uh, yeah if Clay gets a 3-0 dub gotta make the most of the opportunity but last night we saw this big news come out from Jake Hell so he's obviously heard enough about these rosters to say that this is pretty much set in stone as to what the Carolina Royal Ravens are going to do and we actually see from Real here in a second the contract signing gif so it makes me think that if he's signed then these other guys have probably been signed as well so as he says Carolina Royal Ravens are signing Clayster, Godarex and and Real for the 2023-2024 CDL season. Their fourth is not yet decided, but is likely to be figured out soon. Names I've heard included Fame and Gwyn. So um, they would need an SMG to partner Real. Now, I really like what they're doing here. I'm not going to lie. Obviously, Brian Saint comes in recently as the general manager, the head coach. He has experience with Clay, with Godarex, we'll see in a second, with even the likes of Standy. And to be honest, I thought that maybe Clay Standy was going to be a team or two. The initial rumor was a while ago that it was going to be, you know, Clay, Attach, Standy, plus one. And that could be fine, but it seems like Clay and Attach are going to go on the alternate options. You know, there's one option in Carolina. There's one option on Vegas. Gorillas is, you know, as I say, we simply don't know what's happening over there. But this is at least a team of three. 
in tweeting your thoughts on who the fourth should be if this is going to be the team of three. But this is really cool, I think, especially for Godorex. Right, Godorex is a player that was around for a long time in Call of Duty and was considered to be a really kind of top player. Like, he was in the CDL back in 2020 on the Minnesota Rocker with Brian Saint as the head coach. He was really good for the online, for the LAN, sorry, part of that season when they were playing LAN events at the start of the year. Godorex was one of the top performers and Minnesota were probably overperforming expectations compared to Dallas Empire by a phase and, you know, Chicago Huntsman, Godorex and um, the Minnesota Rocker were right up there, probably unexpectedly so. Online came around, Godorex wasn't as good in that situation because the pandemic happens and um, when everything goes online, the team wasn't as good. Godorex individually was still getting kills, but the team wasn't winning. People said, okay, this guy's just playing for kills. Eventually they got rid of him and um, since then he struggled massively to get back into the league, despite being a really good player in challenges. Last year at the Challengers World Championship, he won it, was effectively the finals MVP. I don't think they gave out a finals MVP, but these were his numbers. He had a 1.3 almost in the Challengers World Championship. He had a 1.6 pretty much in the Grand Finals. I mean, Search and Destroy KD 1.5, like um, just insane stuff. And as, uh, you know, Challengers Intel, Josh Everett says, undeniable from start to finish, surely a CDL contract in bounce. But that's far from a guarantee. We know how this works. It's, um, you know, quite often these players, they will prefer to sign the 18-year-old and cracked kid. If Godorex went onto his COD Gamepedia and he changed his, you know, his date of birth or whatever, so he was 18 again, and maybe you change his gamer tag and, you know, put a moustache in his profile picture or something, then all of a sudden, all the teams in the league are scrambling to sign this guy. And it's just the way that it tends to go. When you're considered to be a known quantity, then you know, teams will prefer to take a chance. And it's not bad to take chances on players that are very promising. I think they should do that. And that is also what Ravens are doing. But um, it also makes a lot of sense to sign players that have proven CDL experience, have been really good in recent times, and you can be confident can step in and get the job done. So I'm really, like, pleased with this duo. Because, look, when you're signing Clayster, and Clayster is absolutely a guy that you want to consider signing. He's, you know, such a talismanic figure. What he was able to do for Vegas last year and sure it wasn't all on him the rest of the team was good but Clay helps get the best out of those players the guy knows how to win and um, you know he's a great player to have on your organization really and okay it might be Clay's last year it might not be Clay's best individual year ever you're not expecting Clay to come in and drop a 1.2 like he did back in the advanced warfare days in 2015 when he was you know winning the world championship last year the numbers aren't going to quite be there but that's okay because you know what Clay brings to the rest of the team and you do need, though, someone to slay alongside him. And this is where Godorex in that kind of flex role, which I imagine is what he's going to play, could be really good. Last year, Clay and Temp kind of worked because, look, Clay might give you a 0 0.9, 0 0.95 maybe, but um, if Temp's there dropping, a, you know, the numbers you need, then the team could really succeed. And I think Godorex could be, of all the candidates, especially on the challengers market that are available, that could step into a, like a slaying AR role alongside Clayster. Godorex is one of the ideal guys. So, I'm really happy to see this. And as you guys uh, can see, if you look back here, this is the Modern Warfare season. Actually, the end of Black Ops 4 when he was on E6, came top four at the World Championship in 2019, then came into Modern Warfare, was on that team with Silly, Assault, Godorex, Alex, and Asim. Saint as the coach, of course, now the coach of the Royal Ravens today. And they were good, you know. They did well at the launch weekend. They won their matches. They came, you know, top four at their week three. They came seconds in the Los Angeles event, which I think was the final LAN before everything went online. And after that, they kind of fell off a little bit. And then Godorex eventually was ousted from the outfit. So I guess let's talk about the other player they fought in, which is Real. And this is what I like about um, what they're doing with their roster building. And I'm kind of surprised that I like it as much as I do. But I think they're making good decisions here, to be honest. Because, you know, Godorex, challenges player, but proven and CDL experience. Real, challenges player, no proven CDL experience, but I think he's like 19, cracked out Spanish kids, and um, you know, people have been talking about this guy for a couple of years now, and he was getting gassed up majorly at the start of the Vanguard season, and th there's now a Spanish team in the league. This is the surprising thing. I don't know if it's like Spanish player politics or whatever as to the players they ended up signing, but there's a good argument to say that the best Spanish players that are on the market were not signed by the Miami Heretics. Now, some of them were. Okay, they've got a good team over there, but 
you know, there was the likes of Super and, uh, you know, Real that were not signed to Miami Heretics as a full Spanish lineup, despite arguably being the best Spanish players available at the moment. So, um, yeah, Real, people have been talking about him for some time, and this is a good mesh, I think, of cracked out SMG player with potential, and there isn't too many better players that you'd want to partner with and learn from than Clayster, right? This is the great thing about Clay. As long as he has some veteran experience, I always remember what he said during the Cold War season when he was on that roster. He had to guide Hydra. He had to, you know, Mac was there. Diamond Con was there. There was the other names flying around that um, he had to do all the work for, really, to help those guys grow. A seam maybe helped a bit, but then they had a bit of a, a clash, really. And Clay didn't really want to be the guy that's got to lead the team, but also help develop all of those players. And, you know, basically Clay plus three rookies is going to be too much on Clay to handle. So I imagine Clay's pretty keen to say, all right, you know, Goderect, he's been around a long time, like kind of a veteran in and of itself, and he can help with a bit of that as well. Rail comes in as um, a very promising SMG talent. And then you've got to find a fourth. Now, of course, the fourth is also going to be an SMG player to partner Rayal. I guess you'd want someone who can do a bit more slaying. It depends how things go. But, um, you know, two of these names, Fame, who, of course, was on the Minnesota Rocker last year, played under Brian Saint, who was the coach of that team at the time, that could be interesting. Now, let's not forget, Brian Saint was probably part of the reason why Fame was running at AR for the start of that tenure, and it didn't go so well. When he was on the SMG, all of a sudden, he was showing out, and he's probably a better player than it seemed like he was at the end of last year. Gwyn, though, is another really interesting option as well, because he was on the Seattle Surge bench last year, was never brought up, also did incredibly well at the Challengers World Championship in terms of numbers and results, so, you know, he could be an, an ideal option as well. Of course, he won it with Goderect alongside Purge and Yeez, and Purge, of course, still maybe linked to the Vegas Legion. So yeah, Goderex tweeted this out um, a couple of days ago now. It is time. Real tweeted the same thing out. And then Real just yesterday also tweeted out kind of that he signed the deal. So, you know, looking through those three things, you probably think, all right, he signs. Goderex is tweeting the same things. Clayster seems to be tweeting like, um, you know, Clay wears his heart on his sleeve. You can tell when Clay's going through it and you can tell when Clay's pretty happy. And some of the tweets he's done over the last couple of days probably imply that Clay's got this done now and maybe all the, um, you know, the drama of his offseason is coming to a close. So hopefully that's the case at least. And look, this is a potential team of four that I actually really rather like because it makes sense of the options that are remaining. I think that what they're doing here is like is a pretty sensible set of steps. A lot of the other teams, okay, Minnesota Rocker, I'm not convinced by their roster and I'm not convinced, as you guys full well know, by the Seattle Surge roster, the way that the roles work at least on this theoretical squad of four, let's say it is Gwyn. And of course, there's other players you could put in there instead of Gwyn. You know, there's plenty of other SMG talents. But a more experienced AR duo with a lot of potential slaying power if necessary from the Goderek side of things as well. The leadership from Clayster with a couple of up-and-coming SMGs with lots of potential. That's a pretty good recipe for success. So, you know, I, I think I'm pretty happy with what Carolina are doing. Now, where does that leave Vegas? This is a question because we think Attach and Stanley are going to be there probably for sure. The rest of their roster is unclear, but um, yeah, it could be a seam, it could be Purge, who is linked to the team for sure. Of course, he also won the World Championship, as I said, with Gwyn and uh, Goderex in the challenger side just last year. Gorillas, it's tough to even say. I don't even really want to comment on it because there's simply too many options there on the table. So I did want to mention just before we close out though, because just the other day we saw that Goderex was linked to a challengers roster. It was meant to be Temp, Neptune, Goderex and Gwyn. That was meant to be a challenger team. Now, of course, that's not going to be the case anymore if Goderex and maybe Gwyn are getting signs up to Carolina. So, um, you know, where does that leave Donny Temp? Does, you know, could he go to Vegas? Is that an option? Maybe yes. I mean, they could get him back. It's possible. I wouldn't be massively surprised if they did. Neptune as well is another name that, to be honest, could be linked even to the Carolina team. You know, instead of Gwyn, could they get Neptune? That's possible. So, yeah, it's interesting just to see that some of these challengers roster have formed and then just because the CDL teams are doing things so late and they're taking their time so much with this, that some of these challenger teams are actually getting broken up because the pro teams are finally deciding to make a move. So very much interested in your thoughts on all this in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time.